Hey guys, this is Michael and today we're going to talk about your body as a fat storing machine. Believe it or not, your body is really good at storing fat. Now there are two main reasons it does this so well. One is to have energy beyond the amount of stored glucose, which is known as glycogen, that you can hold in your muscles and your liver. They can only hold so much. Uh, and two, to help quickly remove sugar from your bloodstream when you eat it. Because sugar in your bloodstream is actually toxic and prolonged exposure to it can cause damage to your heart, your nerves, your kidneys. And because you can only store so much glycogen in your muscles and your liver, you need that third more flexible storage area to get sugar out of your blood and keep it from damaging the other tissues in your body. So sugar is energy. It's like the gas in your car and when you eat it, your body either uses it immediately or stores it for later in your muscles and your liver. Just like some gas is used as you drive away from the gas station and some is stored in your gas tank. And by sugar, I mean carbohydrates. Everything from table sugar to tomato salad has some sugar in it. But your tank, your muscles and your liver can only store a limited amount of glycogen, about a day's worth. Glycogen is a pretty short term energy strategy. Now, your brain is a huge consumer of energy. It's definitely your body's gas guzzler. It uses like 20% of your energy. And as you might imagine, your brain is pretty important to your daily life. Everything from just thinking about stuff to operating the systems in your body. Now, what this means is that without another source of fuel, either more sugar eaten or another form of storage, your brain could quickly run out of gas. And you know what this feels like. We have a word for it. It's called hangry. So we need to be effective storers of energy if we want not just to survive, but to function well. Now, unlike our car, we have a second strategy for long-term energy needs. We have a practically unlimited ability to store sugar as fat. The sugar that won't fit in the tank can be stored as fat. Fat is a much longer term energy strategy. And just because you don't need long-term energy solutions now doesn't mean we didn't used to. There were times when we had to go for long periods without actually eating food. This was important not only during our early days when we hunted for our food, but also during more recent periods of famine. Living off of fat stores allowed us to survive when food was scarce. Now, while you can store about a day's worth of energy in your muscles and liver, an average person who is not overweight can store around a month's worth of energy as fat. That gave us a lot of leeway for finding food. And you can store much more than that. There was this guy in 1965, his name was Angus Barbieri, and he weighed 455 pounds. He fasted for 382 days, over one year without eating, until he weighed 180 pounds. And all he consumed during that period was a multivitamin and potassium and sodium supplements. Now, I'm not suggesting that anyone do this. He was under medical supervision. But the point is your body can store energy for very long periods of time without eating. Now, this is why it's so important to reduce the amount of sugars and refined carbohydrates, things like bread and pasta, from your diet. And why people who eat fewer carbs also eat more fat in their diet without gaining excess weight. So sugar and other refined carbohydrates introduce large doses of sugar into your bloodstream. And blood sugar is a signal to your pancreas to produce insulin. Insulin is a hormone that tells your cells to open up and let sugar in to be converted to glycogen and stored in your muscles and your liver. And when that is full, the excess sugar is converted to triglycerides and stored in your muscles and fat tissue to be used later. Now, if you don't eat a lot of carbohydrates, you can quickly use this energy pretty easily. But if, you, if carbohydrates are a regular and large part of your diet, it's much more difficult to get access to that stored fat. And this can obviously have a negative cascade effect if it gets out of control. While that's a little bit beyond what we're talking about here, suffice it to say the more sugar you eat, the more insulin you release. Because it's insulin's job to help store energy away, the more sugar you eat, the less access you have to stored energy. It's insulin's job to store sugar. That means it's insulin's job not to let it out. And that means you're going to store that excess sugar as fat. And when you need energy, you'll get hungry for more sugar to fill the energy demands that aren't being filled by the sugar that's locked away because you've got too much insulin circulating in your blood for too long. Now, the reason our predecessors didn't have this problem was they didn't have refined carbs. As a result, their body was very sensitive to insulin, requiring very little to do its job. Your body can get quite tolerant to insulin, just like alcohol. Sugar came in, insulin came up, performed its function, it was cleared out, and the energy was accessible. 
Now, unlike sugar, fat does not trigger a release of insulin, which is part of the reason why people who eat fewer carbs can eat more fat in their diet. Not only are they replacing one energy source with another, they're not trapping it away. Now, this doesn't mean you can eat unlimited amounts of fat. Your body still does have mechanisms for storing fat in your muscles and your fat cells. But because dietary fat doesn't trigger insulin, your access to the stored energy isn't limited by circulating insulin, and you're likely not to find yourself as hangry when your body needs energy. You won't need to take in more energy. You'll simply use what you have stored. It won't be locked away by circulating insulin. So while we're really good at storing fat for really good survival reasons, it can cause real problems if we're eating too much cheap and easy forms of energy like sugar and refined carbs. We also have strategies to moderate that fat storage that involve keeping as much sugar out of our body as we can and using, maybe surprisingly, more dietary fat as a form of energy. Now, while we're good at storing fat, we're also good at using it. It's dense and our body knows what to do with it, especially if it's not conditioned to use sugar. Sugar is the path of least resistance for our bodies. If it's there, we'll use it. But we do get a fair amount of our store energy from stored fat. And the more we allow our body to use fat as energy, the better we get at metabolizing it burning both the excess fat we've stored and the fat we consume as energy. And by steering away from carb loads and towards fat and whole foods, you can mitigate your body's innate ability to store fat for a rainy day and turn yourself into a fat burning machine as opposed to a fat storing machine. So that's a brief synopsis of why you're so good at storing fat and what you can actually do about it. I hope you enjoyed the story of the history of your fat. And I'll see you later.